Well, I bring you greetings from the Crossroads family. So I not only represent Crossroads, but I represent other ministries, which I'll get into in a minute. I want to just talk to you just a few seconds about Crossroads. It's hard to believe it's almost 60 years since David Maines went on air in Canada and became one of the longest running programs in Canadian television history. Though David was a pastor and evangelist before he came uh, to television broadcast, he had a heart to meet people where they were, and television seemed to be the best way to do that at the time. David was one of the first evangelists in, uh, and pastors in Canada, but also one of the first in North America to go on mainstream television. Though David has gone on to be with the Lord, he has left a legacy for, for us here today and for future generations. David's heart for people carries on today where we not only meet them where they are, but we also are reaching out to them, especially those who are hurting through our 24-7 prayer center, which is now averaging well over 12,000 calls per month. Now, though, though some people are uh, calling in more often, that's the average. Sometimes it goes, sometimes we're averaging almost 10,000 a week. It all depends on the time of the season as well. But uh, we are uh, reaching them with the love and compassion of Christ as as well as trying to encourage them in their walk with Jesus. And Crossroads, through its innovative programming, is also uh, trying to reach people today in the different areas and walks of life through CASEL and our other various programs, which uh, continues, as I mentioned, the legacy of David, of reaching people where they are. But one of the interesting aspects, so when David started this ministry, it was also to bring the church together. Very much like your network, David's heart was for all Christians, not any specific denomination, non-denomination. He embraced all those who embraced Christianity. He also embraced all those outside of Christianity to bring them into a knowledge and revelation of Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm just going to say lastly about Crossroads through uh, technology and the things that are available to us today. Our programs can now be viewed around the world via the internet and through YouTube and other media platforms. Uh, uh, Pastor C. Mac asked me to do this and uh, I didn't respond right away because I really wanted to hear from God as to what he wanted me to convey to you today. So in order to give you some context as to what I'm gonna say, I'm going to introduce myself a little more, uh, shall I say, expanded and expanded version. Uh, not only I'm church director for in church relations for Crossroads Christian Communications, I'm also the executive director of the Chapel Hill Group of Ministries, which is a global ministry that uh, brings churches together in unity and harmony, but also meets the needs of the church wherever they are. This year, we planted three churches in Africa, uh, Uganda, uh, Tanzania, and Liberia. I also sit on the board of directors for an international university called Grace University, which is global, as I mentioned, which also allows uh, ministries to be uh, issued credentials globally as well. So today I wanna to talk to you about ministry and pastoring in the post COVID age. Now uh, you, you might be saying that, you know, uh, we may not be out of the pandemic or, or post or the, how can we reach a post COVID, COVID may never go away, but we have to look uh, to ministry beyond the point where we are today. So to look to the future, we first must look to the past. You know, I was praying about this. I just wanted to be able to talk to you. I really don't want to preach to you. I just want to talk to you about some of my experiences and why I think we're going the way we are. And I'm going to be really forthcoming with you. I'm going to be extremely honest. And, uh, and uh, my, my, my hope is that you will hear my heart. For the last 25 years, I've worked in addition to everything that I talked to you about. I worked for large international ministries from Billy Graham uh, to just about anyone that you can talk to. I've, I've worked alongside them, worked for them in various capacities. So my only motivation for this that God had given me was to bring the body of Christ together, especially church leadership. For the longest time uh, working with these ministries, I was able to uh, experience things that uh, the average Christian would not, especially when it comes to the operations of large ministries. 
And I've seen some things that were very, very good. I've seen some things that were not so good. And I've seen some very interesting things. Now, that's not to say that we don't see them today, but uh, today they're more virtual. And back then they were more personal because you were right there. So, Pastor C. Mac, I don't know if you want to pull your Bible out, but I'm going to go to Ephesians 4, verses 1 to 3. And I'm going to actually read from the English Standard Version of the Bible. And it says, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of your calling, to which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, and eager to maintain the unity of spirit in the bond of peace. Now, why do I say that to you? Because it's been my experience working with these large international ministries traveling all over North America, that there's been two classes of ministers, those who acknowledge that this call is of God and those who saw this as a vocation or a job. Now, this makes unity very difficult because you have one group of people who are desperately trying to connect with one another, and a second group which are self-motivated, moted in self-promotion, protectionism, and, and other various things that are contrary to the Word of God. And this makes it different, difficult in pastoring because now you're getting people pastored uh, correctly and incorrectly. Uh, what I mean by that is this. We saw that demonstration that we have not been doing our job properly based on what happened at the beginning of this pandemic. And this has been greatly acknowledged by many pastors throughout the nation. Because if we had done our job properly, and, uh, and what I mean by that, those, those who are not always having to see like this was a daily struggle in ministry, we would have raised up much stronger congregations. The fear and anxiety that people felt was not of God, but God says, fear not. So we ask ourselves our question, if God says, fear not, because he is handling this, he is protecting us, then why so much fear and anxiety amongst congregations, speaking of the Christian church? What this pandemic has done, and I'm speaking just to those who are called to minister, we have seen this as a time of winnowing for the pastorate. Uh, it's a sifting, so we uh, uh, separating the wheat from the chaff, basically. During this pandemic, we've seen those who have been called strengthened, and we've seen those who thought this was a vocation leave the ministry. Now, this was good because now we now we, we've got to a point where ministers who are called to the gospel can actually ensure that the gospel, the pure gospel message, gets out. One that is free of, of uh, personal comments or opinions or biases. That's not to say all the things we experienced in the past with the church have been those who were, saw this as a vocation. But certain things because of denominations and other biases really prevented the church from coming together as one body. Words like inclusion and diversity were seldom, seldom spoken but seldom understood as well. Some of these things have caused, a, in the past, a great division between larger ministries and smaller ministries because of the, uh, there were, well, let's put it this way, there's been a past that wasn't uh, so credible, and integrity in ministry is so very, very important. Whatever it was, whether it's broken promises or uh, ill feelings or mis, uh, misinterpretation of things, yeah, it caused a disconnect between the local church and other facets of ministry. My real heart is to see the local church grow and thrive. It's always been that way, and it always will. My heart is to see every local church grow. But more important, embracing the richness of the Christian church. And I truly believe that uh, as a Caucasian minister, I think that we miss out terribly when we don't embrace the wonderful fullness of the Farsi Christian ministry and all the Farsi ministries around the world that bring such, um, uh, uh, such character, uh, such uh, um, enlightenment, such direction, and such promise to the Christian church. For the first time in my lifetime, I am seeing people 
get away from being of a camp and now being of the camp of Jesus Christ. You know, it's, it's interesting what the Apostle Paul said so long ago, uh, which is true today when he made this appeal, because he knew there was going to be division among us. Uh, in 1 Corinthians, the uh, Apostle Paul says, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church, rather be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. Those are our responsibilities moving forward. I truly believe that we are at a point now when the church is coming together more than it ever has since the days of the Apostle Paul. We all are a part of the body. You are my brothers, you are my sisters, but we are a part of one body. We each have a function in that body. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we talk about the diversities, making, uh, making it clearer that though we are all different, we, are all, we have all part to play in the fullness of the gospel, the fullness of Christianity, and what God has called us to be. And more importantly, as ministers, what God has called us to minister to. Yes, there are going to be denominational differences, and there could be even some, there obviously are some theological differences, but at the end of the day, the common thing that we have together is the Word of God. Now, I, I could go on for hours on this, obviously I'm not going to, but I, I just want to say this, that by looking at our diversities and the different gifts that God has given us, the different activities, the different languages, the different cultures, these all make up one body. This is so important when we understand about Pentecost and the longing of every minister to see the power of the Holy Spirit move in such a special way, impacting lives wherever we go. So I'm a guy who's all about the solution, not about the problem. Why? Because it would drive me crazy. I can't tell you how many times I went into a hotel room after uh, an event I was doing with the ministry, fell on my knees and said, Lord, I quit. Only to be reminded, that's not what I was called to do. The Lord was allowing me to see things so I could come up with solutions from him. Because God's heart is our, should be our heart. His work should be our work. And his purpose should be our purposes. Now, I say that because you really don't know me. So I, when I say I speak from the heart, I also speak from a person who really, when they say my life is not my own, is true. I've had 15 healing miracles in my life that I should be dead so many times. It's, it's unimaginable. From eight strokes to three, four attacks of cancer, I almost forgot one, uh, to so many other things that have happened to me. But God miraculously healed me and lifted me back up. And why? To encourage you today, you have all been called. God has gifted you tremendously. And in my opinion, has given all of you such special work to do. Why? Just because of the cultural differences from Christianity to the Muslim faith. Your pastoral gifts that you have today will truly impact nations. The anointing that God has placed on your life is so impactful. It will cause people to seek out Jesus Christ. Therefore, our ministry today, both in North America and around the world, will have to change. For as long as I remember, we talked about God creating technology for our use. And now it's come to fruition today. So the first thing we have to understand is we need to be strong in our calling. We have to use our faith the way God wanted us to use it. We have to look beyond the obstacles that are before us to him, knowing that our faith in him will sustain us through any situation or any circumstance. Why? Because you're doing his work and he blesses his work. He blesses anything you set your hand to do. And this will have a direct effect on your ministry and pastoring and evangelizing. As we embrace the technology as David Maines did way back when in 1962, we have to incorporate these media platforms, these these visual arts, along with our in-person meetings. Today, through the advances of technology, 
We can have people participate from all over the world as we're doing right here today. And we can make an impact for the kingdom. But let me stress, we can only do this together. You know, the, the real key of Pentecost is something that we give lip service to, but we don't understand it fully. And that is they were in one accord. Unity will cost you something. It's no longer about self, but it's about everyone else. Unity causes us to think of how we can help each other, how we can get involved, how we can support. Let's look at our great example. As I like to phrase it, as God was in complete unity and harmony with himself, we are to be with him and each other. God did not create anything unless he was in complete unity with himself. You know, I stand with you and I stand with Pastor C-Mac and all of you today as my brothers and sisters, as I always will. I understand the importance of this gathering, as it is my hope that others will open their eyes to see the richness that is here today and the great power to shake nations that is right in this meeting here today. Now, how do I know this is all working? I'll give you the example of Crossroads. I had planned to retire from this three years ago when the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me to ask at the time CEO Lorna Duick if she wanted to reconnect with the church. And she said, yes, I do. I really, this is the heart of David. Before he passed away, he was reaching out to the church. She was the former CEO of Crossroads. Uh, Lorna Duick, I said, when I start this, first that we have to embrace unity. We have to embrace our diversity. We have to be inclusive. And we have to show that we want to give back to the church. So when I started this two years ago, they had 24 churches. This is in Canada, representing six denominations and non-denominations. Today, God, under the banner of unity and diversity, there are 702 churches involved now, representing 137 different denominations, fellowships, organizations, and affiliations, representing everything from the Catholic Church to the Evangelical Church. God is bringing those with the heart of unity to see impacting our nations as well as our communities with the love and compassion of Christ to fruition today. So how does this all affect what I stated at the beginning of the how ministry needs to change going forward. It's very simple. From a calling perspective, uh, moving forward, we need to understand that as ministers, we need to be diverse. We need connections. We need to work with one another to fulfill not only the calling of others, but the calling in our life. From a pastoral perspective, having the tools to be able to communicate with our community, both in person and virtually. By working together, such as Crossroads, we can help assist you in equipping and getting ready for this new era of ministry in which technology will be a part of your everyday weekly services. And finally, through ministry, to have a strong, united voice for Christ. Under unity, we can come together and address those issues that are important to the church, both from, uh, from a Farsi's perspective or from any perspective to ensure that our rights and freedoms in this country continue so we can continue to preach the gospel to everyone. Together, we have the possibility to change government uh, legislation, public perception, and demonstrate that God is about love and love when, only. So I may have gone over. I do apologize, Pastor. Uh, I know it's different when translating, but uh, I thank you so much uh, for allowing me to be able to share some of my heart with you. But the most, in thing I, most important thing I'd like you to take away is that it is so vitally important that we continue to work together, support each other, to pray for each other, and to step in wherever we can to support one another. It is vitally important to ensure that this gospel message that has the power to change lives continues to go around the world and to continue to support those nations that are struggling right now. It's always a privilege to be with you whenever I can. Sometimes if you see me blacked out, I'm here listening to you, but it means I, I'm multitasking. You have to understand that I, I seem to be like the hub for ministry in North America because of my connections to all the large international ministries. So sometimes I'm connecting large ministries and that's the same for you. If any of you wanna be connected, uh, if you're needing uh, materials, literature, 
Uh, I have connections with ministries all over. I'm happy to work with you to see them get into your hands or uh, to do whatever I can to do my part to help you.